Darktide just got a really big update that brought some absolutely massive gameplay changes alongside some new things. First, the really big changes. Ranged stuns are finally gone. Darktide's worst mechanic has finally been addressed. Ranged enemy attacks will no longer stun you unless you're out of toughness. Getting your toughness broken will also no longer stun you. Shotgunners still knock you back though. You will never have your slide interrupted by a single bullet ever again. To compensate, the 1 second toughness break grace period now only reduces range damage by 50% instead of 75% on damnation. Rager attacks have finally been made dodgeable. You can now actually fight ragers in melee. Crushers, Bulwarks, Plague Augurans, and Chaos Pawns have had their stagger threshold increased to make them harder to chain stagger. As a result, Augurin can no longer perma stagger Pawgrans. I couldn't get them to react to slaps, and Shovel Punches only affect the Chaos Pawn. Voice Strike and Rumbler staggering bosses also appears to be gone. Abilities and grenades still stagger them like they used to. Speaking of bulwarks, they've been massively improved. Their force field has disappeared. You will no longer hear that horrible ping sound when shooting at exposed flesh. If you see any meat, you can shoot it. They now have a higher stagger threshold. They should now suffer less slight staggers preventing them from attacking when shot in the back. The slight stagger animation has also been made shorter. They are easier to stagger during an attack animation. This also means the bolter no longer pops them open in a single shot. They can no longer spawn in massive packs as patrols and there should be fewer of them spawning as ambience. You should be seeing less massive packs of bulwarks from now on. Scavenger and Survivalist have been hit with a much deserved nerf and now have a 5 second cooldown. This is a good start and hopefully they'll be removed from the game entirely further down the line so ammo economy can start being a thing in Darktide. All of these changes are by far the best part of the update, but it's not all it brought. The Tox Bomber joins the ranks of the Dregs, and he's pretty interesting. He's a sneaky special that doesn't have a global spawning sound. Just like the Scab Bomber, his grenades will deal some damage on impact, and will stun you if you're too close to them when they go off. They bounce and roll around a lot more than the Scab Bomber grenades. His tox grenades release a cloud of gas on explosion. His gas will chunk your toughness hard before corrupting your health. It is supposed to reduce toughness generation when standing inside it but currently is bugged and actually increases toughness generation while inside it. Trust me, there are worse bugs than this this update. His gas will also buff all enemies that walk through it. It gives enemies damage reduction based on their armor type. It will also give them 2.5 times hit mass and 40% more movement speed. The buff will linger for 3 seconds after enemies have left the gas. He's an interesting enemy, providing a softer area denial option than the scab bomber over a larger area in a longer period of time. The new pox gas modifier adds Nurgle mushrooms to the level that periodically release pox gas around them. This gas functions similarly to the Tox Bomber Grenades. There are currently two Maelstrom variants that can show up with the Pox Gas modifier. Waves of Specialists, Pox Gas, Nurgle's Blessing, Only Drag Faction, and Increased Patrols, Waves of Specialists, Pox Gas, Monstrous Specialists, and Snipers. A new penance-related progression system has been added, alongside a whole bunch of new penances. 
You can access it via the pause menu or by visiting Hestia's stand in the Morningstar. The first page shows you 10 recommended penances that are usually partially completed, and the second page is a more traditional complete overview of all the penances in the game, split up into different categories. A progression track is visible at the bottom of both pages and will move forward when you gain penance points, letting you claim rewards once you reach the associated milestone. Some milestones will give you multiple rewards which can be viewed by hovering over that penance and pressing the associated button. Completing penances grants both cosmetics and penance points like it always did. You can track up to 5 penances and they will be visible in the tactical overlay. There are also chat messages that will pop up when someone on the strike team completes a penance. Getting this new system into the game was a good thing, even if some of the penances are a little ridiculous. This update also brought some changes to existing missions. A puzzle has been added to every single map. Solving this puzzle releases a martyr's skull. Successfully extracting after interacting with it will complete associated penances and give 100 plasteel. The plasteel will only be paid out if someone in the strike team hasn't already done it before. Heretical idols will now appear in random locations during missions and can be destroyed for a 50 plasteel reward per idol. You can now change every single aspect of a character except for class at the Barber Chirurgeon. My zealot is finally Scottish. Our purpose is holy! Our wrath divine! Habdraco's end event has been made prettier, but is now a boring stand and hack. Refinery Delta's end event has received some much needed improvements. It's not exactly there yet, but it's a good start. The respawn point on the middle event of Enclavum Baras has been moved down the stairs. You no longer need to talk to Melk to start progressing your contracts or collect your reward. There's been a few balance changes outside the survivalist nerf, but this video is already long enough and they're pretty minor in comparison, so I'm not gonna list them. Disrupt Destiny and Trample might be a little silly. And that's it for the Path of Redemption update. Patch notes are linked in the description if you want to read them yourself.